much, Steve. Started their nuclear family. Screw that. The deer? I was pleading too. <laughs> Then tell me. Tell you what? You love me. Really? Heretic! Retreated back to the safety of name. Name. Steve. Oh. We like Steve. Yes. <laughs> but we don't love Steve. What? <laughs> It's okay, Nance. As a wise man once said, we've got shared trauma. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. ETEP right back here with you. It is a new year. We're talking about some new topics, a show I binged watch while I was sick over Christmas break, uh, Stranger Things, and we touched on this last night during our main event topic on the show, uh, the entire member stream, almost in its entirety, was dedicated to talking about, you know, Stranger Things and a few extra articles we didn't get it to cover on the main show, and here I am with one left over. Uh, Stranger Things fans are begging for a new Nancy love interest in season five. Uh, Stranger Things fans are begging for a new love interest for Nancy that isn't Jonathan or Steve in season five of the hit Netflix series. Now, my my caveat to this is we already know where they're going to go with this, and I really enjoy the fact that this show has remained uh, pretty much unsullied as far as wokeness or identity politics go. And if you have, basically, we talked about this last night, and Chris uh, Fisk was right. If we have one uh, alphabet character on this show, that's pretty much proper representation. Uh, we're talking 1980s rural Indiana. Uh, th that's not going to be, you know, much more now than it was then, um, because in reality we're talking three percent of the population, uh, not fifty percent like you know most TV shows would have you believe. So they're of course going to steer this towards Nancy and Robin. Robin being that representation. Now her affections for I, I believe I can't remember the gal's name. Um, but they seemingly were going to go unrequited until we got the end uh, with the peanut butter jelly sandwich gimmick. Uh, you know, them kind of being playful. And, and honestly, I thought the way they handled Robin's character was done really well. Um, now, considering these are, you know, we're talking about younger teenagers. And, and I will credit their writing for this. Uh, my son didn't even ask about it. Now, there's been other series where things have come up and he's asked me a question and I've kind of dodged it because of how young he is. He really likes this show and it was never even a question. So, And, and then there's the obvious, uh, not only to talk about Nancy, but Will, uh, Byers as well, is they've kind of danced around the topic of him possibly you know, being gay, which I don't think would be too far removed. Uh, from where his character is. And I honestly, I, I don't need to do that. They really don't. Leaving it ambiguous would be just as effective, um, if not more, to your audience because you're going to alienate less people that way. And I don't say alienate because they're homophobes. I say alienate because it doesn't matter in terms of the story. It, it just doesn't matter. It hasn't been like a plot point you know, um, it's not relevant to the larger story unless it's written that way, which, I mean, in the last season, it doesn't make sense to do that. And, and kind of to bring this back with Nancy as well, uh, it doesn't make sense. So let's, let's see what the article says, though. Uh, Netflix viewers want to see Nancy with a new love interest in Stranger Things Season 5. Of the many interconnected plot lines in the hit sci-fi series, Nancy Wheeler, uh, Nancy Wheeler's uh, love life is one of the most discussed among Stranger Things fans, though she started the show with Steve Joe Keery as her love interest. And Steve is great. Uh, the character is wonderful. Uh, his and Dustin's dynamic is so, so great. That comedic, just their, their back and forth is, is wonderful. Let's see. Uh, Jonathan 
uh, became her boyfriend in later seasons. Uh, you know, Jonathan uh, Byers, Will's older brother. Uh, in the show's latest installment, season four, Nancy and Steve seem to be rekindling their romance, keeping the love triangle alive, heading into season five. Really, with the the stuff with Vecna, it uh, it did seem to bring uh, Steve and and Nancy back together. The will they, won't they, with her and Jonathan. I think it's almost it, it would almost be better um, for her to go back with Jonathan because Steve's character development um, on his own has been, you know, away from that, like, jock, mimbo kind of... It, it's been really good. So I, I don't know if him going back with Nancy would hinder that character development. Uh, with Nancy, Jonathan, and Nancy and Steve as two of the most popular pairings in Stranger Things, the series' various social media accounts often, often reference them, uh, leading to entertaining interactions with fans as they fight for their preferred couple. However, recent posts... And, and the Stranger Things writer's Twitter account centered on Nancy and Jonathan garnered unexpected replies. Though many users expressed their disdain for Nancy and Jonathan in the replies and defended Nancy's relationship with Steve, several chose to spotlight a different pairing of that of Nancy and Robin, who is Maya Hawk, of course the daughter of Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman. Uh, see the original tweet and a few of the reactions below. Here's, uh, so here, here we are right here. Uh, happy holidays. We have this. This is the Stranger Writers here. Uh, hmm. No, lesbian Nancy is is the happiest holiday. Jesus. Uh, here's another one. No one actually wants this. Uh, happiest holidays, of course. Uh, it's Robin and uh, Nancy together. Here's uh, no happiest holidays. These two together. Steve and uh, Eddie and Robin and. Uh, why? Why? See, this is the we. These people are weird. In, in watching this show, I will say the one romance that I was most interested in was Hopper and Joyce, um, because I thought after you know, spoiler alert in three, two, one, uh, when Bob had suffered his untimely demise, uh, Sean Astin, Hopper and Joyce. I thought that it's funny, like Jonathan and Nancy, the shared trauma. I thought that would kind of bring them together, and then, you know, the date got set up, and she was with the science teacher going over the properties of magnetism, and that led to that whole plot. So, of her standing them up, and then they spent an entire season fighting like they were an old married couple without ever having gone on one date, which I thought was really annoying. Um, I didn't, I, that was the one, my one gripe with the series was that uh, season three dynamic of, um, Hopper and Joyce. That didn't make any sense uh, given their character arcs individually and their trajectory uh, of them coming together. It, di it didn't make any sense to me. Um, yeah, here's just some more uh, Robin and Nancy. Uh, the shippers, as the uh, the kids say on Tumblr. The Tumblrinas. Uh, happiest holidays, but could be even better holidays. Another one, of course. I I I'm guaranteeing you a lot of these are bots. Um... Where's Ronance? Oh, that's Robin and Nancy. Oy, that's loud and annoying. Um, happier, but could be even happier. Her name starts with an R. Jesus. Yeah, see, so that, that's some of the Twitter uh, reactions, the weirdos on Twitter. Could Robin and Nancy end up together? Uh, Robin and Nancy as a duo were a surprise hit after Stranger Things Season 4 saw older teens pair up in order to investigate Victor Creel. That was an excellent storyline. Seeing Robert England involved in a season that was such an homage to Nightmare on Elm Street was yeah, that was a chef's kiss. It was wonderful. Uh, viewers responded positively to the friendship between the very different young women, especially since Nancy hasn't had a close female friend since the series, uh, since Barb, uh, her early demise, and Robin's closet confidant is Steve. Uh, while the strong female friendship was a promising direction for the sci-fi series, some Stranger Things fans picked up on romantic tension between the pair, possibly due to the appeal of opposites attracting and Robin's confirmed attraction to women. Okay, so just because Robin has an attraction to women, Nancy's a woman, why not scissor, right? I could do without the whole love triangle with Nancy and Jonathan and Steve. Uh, it just, it, it's, it's never, it's never enough. It's, it's never enough. 
Um, you know, I, I just, I don't get it. I really don't get it. But it's probably because I don't... <laughs> And this is another thing that my all my criticisms of this get dismissed because I'm just a straight, right? You know, which is straight, and you know, and I'm married and to a woman. <laughs> and it's like they're like, oh, you're just a white guy. And it's like, wait, so just because that my opinion doesn't count? Well, you know, like I said, um, we're we're talking three percent or less of the entire populace. Um, doesn't get to dictate, you know, everything. Now, if you want to have a relationship for a character who is confirmed, you're not, you don't need this character that's been four seasons, and just because there's two women, it would, two, they're, they're, they're just saying two women can't be friends. They just can't. They just can't. They have to scissor. And, and that's stupid. It's absolutely stupid that, and, and I'm not blaming the Duffer brothers for this. This is fans. You know, and they've done an excellent job with this series. Like I said, um, my complaints to this were just levied to Joyce and Hopper's, you know, their dynamic. But no, this, uh, just, just because there's two women together, it's like, oh my God, they can't be friends. They have, to, they have to be lesbians. It's like, why? Why? That really downplays the actual, you know, female friendships, the power of that. Uh, as for the possibility of the relationship becoming canon in Stranger Things Season 5, it's unlikely the series will take that route. Thank you very much. Uh, due to the many seasons that have established Steve, Nancy, and Jonathan as a central love story within the older teen group. Despite their chemistry, Nancy and Robin have only recently interacted together on screen, giving them much less of a foundation than the other couples. However, there will be a time jump in Season 5, which could lead to Nancy and Robin glowing, growing closer and bonding over the things they went through in Stranger Things 4 and beyond. Uh, additionally, tweets from the Stranger Things writer's account seem to leave room for the possibility of a new love story for Nancy. Since their first holiday post about Steve and Nancy sported the phrase Happy Holidays, and Jonathan and Nancy post read Happier Holidays, question mark, question mark, uh, with no follow-up showcasing the char character's potential happiest holiday. Of course, that doesn't confirm anything about Nancy and Robin's potential romance, which would certainly be a twist if it were to come true in Season 5. Even with the continuing fan investment in Nancy's relationships, the best result for Stranger Things Season 5 would be to focus on her growth as an independent character first and her love life second. That is one of the only intelligent things that the writer of this article actually said um, during during the course of this um, was was that focus on her character growth individually first, and that's a best case scenario. So, for reference, no, I do not believe Nancy needs to be put into a relationship with Robin, despite what weirdos on Twitter, Tumblrinas might have you believe. That's not going to make any sense. It's not going to move her character forward in any sort of direction that would follow the path that's already been laid out by the writers of the series, the Duffer Brothers, which their writing leads us nowhere to believe that this is where she's going. And, and I think the people that are picking up on that supposed sexual tension between Nancy and Robin are, are the ones that just insist that two females or two males cannot simply be friends without having some weird uh, sexual encounter or, or attraction between them, which that totally takes away from like platonic relationships. That doesn't make any sense. That, that, that is to literally you know deconstruct the, the concept of a platonic relationship. And that would be the intention. And, and these writers, these that's not their modus operandi. They have written an extremely well-crafted show with compelling characters. Uh, like we talked about, there's really been no unlikable characters on this show. And my only gripe was because Joyce and Hopper, the way they were written was just kind of with them bickering for a whole season like they'd been dating, but they weren't. Uh, so Nancy, no, Nancy doesn't need this. Uh, the, the triangle, the love triangle with her, Steve, and Jonathan, the name eluded me for a second, Jonathan, has been, you know, it, it served its purpose, but she can move forward, you know, either by herself or, I, I, like I said, it would serve her better to be with Jonathan than it would with Steve because Steve's another character with great individual growth away from being in a relationship with Nancy. So despite what, you know, they, they might have leaned in, I, I think... 
that would be a mistake to put those two back together. But then that's because they have just their characters have grown so so well uh, apart from each other. Like I said, and and I don't see it as a hindrance putting her back with Jonathan, um, much as I would seeing it would hinder her with Steve. You know, that just seems like a backslide. But and that's not to the detriment of his character either. But like I said, individually they're just far better off. Um, you know, the friends thing that that definitely works, and it keeping them that way would prove that you know it, it is a platonic relationship is uh, is possible, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, contrary to what writers may have you believe. But no, that's it, gang. Uh, welcome to all the new channel members. Thank you for joining. We truly appreciate you all. And yeah, just thank you for watching, gang. Slap that like button if you haven't yet. Subscribe. Ding the bell for notifications, all the fun stuff. I'm E. Temple Kui, the place to be reviews. We've been here with all these. If we don't see you, have a great day. A pleasant tomorrow. We'll catch you on the next one. It's better to burn out than to fade away. I could do this all.